Hi, my name is Yumna Musa, and I want to tell you why I don't want to be a doctor anymore. Last year I worked under a man who sexually harassed me. It wasn't only me, it wasn't always sexual, it was open and it was every day. Humiliating and degrading lower ranking doctors is a big part of medical education. So he is an award winning teacher. I had to say something. I had my phone with me while the hospital management explained that actually there was nothing wrong with my supervisor's behavior. First, the racism. Are you defining yourself as Helen? Well, I, it's race. tricky for me. No, we'll pick one. I don't want to. But no, but you're saying that this is a racist problem. So you must pick a race and then we, then we, we work from there. In the last two years, as far as I can see, there have been 16 whites, 43 Indians, 33 blacks, and 10 colors, of which the one, I'm going to classify you as colored whether you, whether you like it or not. In this diverse group of people, is in your group, he must have experienced the same, same process, because he's, part of, he's, he's a colored and he's, and he's in the department of An example of something I mean is to say to a particular black person, you being stupid like a black person. So it's not to all the black people, it's to that person, okay. but it's referring to their race in the insult. Okay. And that is okay. okay. So it's individualized. It's not racism. Okay. Racism is okay. a particular race. Yes. If I'm racist, I will be racist towards Every white man in this yes. room. Otherwise, it's not racism. It's not racism. It's no. It, no. It's otherwise, if she is racist. Right? Or say, let's, let's use sexual harassment. Because sexual harassment, the definition is something that you personally feel uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. So if she makes a remark, and I'm comfortable with that remark, then it, it's not sexual. Pretty bad. But does it have to make every woman yes. that has yes. ever spoken to him yes. uncomfortable? That's the definition of sexual Yes. An essential skill for doctors is speaking with absolute authority. But say we did take their nonsense seriously. How do you count how many people are uncomfortable? The first time I came to you to speak about Dr. One of the things you said to me was that I wasn't the first person who complained. Mm -hmm. What was that? That was what I'd heard from a previous consultant. Okay. But that's, you know, there's no, there was no um, formal hearing or anything about that. You know, so. Okay. So if it's not formal, then no. it didn't happen. No, it didn't really happen. It sure. Um... Since then, I've found five junior doctors who've submitted written complaints about the behavior of seniors at this hospital. In one case, as part of a large group. Never mind verbal complaints. But these cries for help never became formal. Strange? Here's why. You know, mm -hmm. you never, when you're young, want to do something that's going to impact upon you for the next 15 or 20 years. It will, that's wrong. You'll never get another job. When I say never get another job, you, you're unlikely. You want this kids out. This is what you, this is your conduct. But the f my conduct is explaining that I felt uncomfortable with the behavior of my family. You're welcome to. But what I'm trying to get across to you, one out of 360, and if 359 have agreed with it, you will stop stealing a lien. And the departments, no department, wants a person who is the, the low man. So if everybody's happy with a certain setter, we all drink beer at lunchtime. You want to come say, don't drink beer? No, fuck off. This is the bottom drinks beer at lunchtime. We don't want to, we don't, you know, whatever the, the, whatever the decision, whatever the processes are, if you want to be the loner, people will not want you in the department. So it's yeah. confusing because a lot of these things that happen, like, are problematic. It is no, problematic. Only the fact you. that there's a workplace that is sexist you. is problematic. That's you. not true, Dr. You know, I'm an old man in this game. Yeah. Only to you and these the circumstance. And nobody is 100% happy at work. I've been in this game a long time, I'm telling you, right. Okay.
It's like a dog to be treated like one. It's like you're a little spoiled brick to be treated like one. Right. What advice do you Appreciate the conversation. Chuck that book away. Stand up and say an act of God is occurring. God works in mysterious and wonderful ways. And that your book has been lost. You're applying for a new one. And having a thought about it that you've had a long chat and you realize that maybe what you said is inappropriate. Anything whether you do with it, that's not my problem. You just think that's the main solution? Well, I'm telling you, it's the solution. The book contains the only full record of my two years of supervised medical work as an intern. I didn't throw it away. And then I heard that I couldn't continue with my career. The head of department wrote that after two years of notoriously grueling work as a doctor in South African hospitals, I still have worse clinical skills than a university student and need to be retrained because I'm unsafe. The reason why she's not been signed off is about some serious clinical performances and mismanagement of patients. As an HOD of the department, I cannot sign off an intern who I feel whose training has not been sufficient for her to learn the basic principles. In order to assist my career, they were deliberately sabotaging it, so I would learn a lesson about what it means to be a good doctor. And more importantly, so would my colleagues. Very long story short, the Health Professionals Council of South Africa overturned the HOD's decision. They finally said I'm allowed to work as a doctor. Why am I posting this video about how I don't want to? I'm doing this publicly because I want attention. Every day, other junior doctors in South Africa and around the world are subject to the same kind of institutional coercion that I was. Stop putting up with this. As a former doctor, I have nothing left to lose. I can take some risks and hopefully show how the law will provide support. Meanwhile, those with influence must deal with the systematic culture of abuse in medicine. It is tricky. One sympathetic health official is now considering removing the feedback section from internship logbooks so other junior doctors can't get themselves into trouble by complaining. It comes up over and over again. The harms I've suffered are my own fault. I brought them upon myself by not just keeping my head down. Medicine is a military hierarchy. Juniors are constantly told, this is what your seniors went through and we must just do our time and get it over with. Some think this just obey orders approach is the best way to deal with emergencies or an overwhelming war against poverty and disease. Me? I genuinely believe in the healing power of kindness and mutual respect and the importance of honest communication for avoiding deadly mistakes or learning from them. I'm a young, educated person who's committed to making a contribution to my society. So I'm doing everything I can to prevent anyone else having my experience. And I'm looking elsewhere for my true calling.